My goal is to expose mental health, make it common knowledge, instead of being hushed away. I suffer with anxiety, seasonal affective disorder, which um, a lot of people suffer with um, in the winter months when it gets darker because of the lack of serotonin. I felt like I got to grips with it, but it comes back and knocks me in the face to remind me that it's still there. I have anxiety in a lot of different ways. I have social anxiety. Um, I get anxiety about getting anxiety. I have panic attacks about anxiety. Um, I get anxiety about having depression. I get anxiety about everything. There's a really good book which I found really helpful for me. It's called Panic Attacks and it's by Christine Ingham. Um, that talks all about panic attacks and I found it so useful. I don't know what I would have done without it. When I read the um, symptoms of a panic attack, I actually started crying because I thought I was the only one in the world who suffered from them. I had no idea what was actually happening to me. I thought, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. When I was at the worst, I went to the doctors and they suggested me going to a mental health charity called Mind. They do a lot of work and I spoke to a guy named Gareth from the charity and this is what he had to say. So my name is Gareth Turner, I work at Caerphilly Borough Mind. Uh, my official job title is Project Lead, but a big part of the, the job that I do uh, day to day is I work as a training officer for the organisation. So I work, um, quite a bit, large bit of my time is spent working with groups of individuals um, who are recovering from uh, mental ill health, uh, running groups such as condition management kind of work, um, things like depression management, anxiety management, that kind of stuff. So I do a lot of that kind of work, but also work uh, in a training capacity, training prof uh, professionals basically then, uh, in, in things such as mental health first aid, I teach things uh, like uh, suicide intervention skills, that kind of stuff as well. So, so yeah, quite quite a mixed and varied role, but uh, yeah, tra training is probably the, the the dominant part of my role. The good thing about mind is that you don't have to say what you suffer with. You're not known for your mental illness or whatever you are having trouble with. You're just known for who you are. You don't have to speak to anyone. You can just sit there and say nothing or you can get involved with everyone and the good thing is that you meet people like yourself and as much as I don't like people to experience the same as me I actually take comfort in the fact that I'm not alone. So MIND, uh, MIND is the National Association for Mental Health, so the biggest uh, mental health charity in England and Wales, so MIND covers England and Wales, um, so it's a very large charity. I've experienced a lot of negativity because I have an anxiety disorder and a panic disorder. People think I'm crazy, people just think I'm overreacting. Um, when I get really, really bad anxiety, I just, I'm terrified to go out the house. I just want to curl up in a ball and just stay in bed. Even though that'll make me worse in the long term. In the short term, it feels like that is what I should do. When, when you have an anxiety attack, there's a couple of things that happen in your body, and it's all down to the amygdala, which is a little bit of the brain that just controls your sort of fear. And when the amygdala thinks you're in danger, and it can be due to emotional or environmental factors, uh, and it'll sort of trigger, um, but with anxiety, there can sometimes just be no cause, just something has triggered it for, for no reason and you get all these different chemicals and hormones released into your body and it's as if your body is reacting to an actual threat but you know there's nothing there and um, you've got all this adrenaline and epinephrine um, just being released into your body and you start shaking your chest starts going really tight as, as if you're actually being chased by some sort of monster or uh, just just feels like there is a threat to you my first ever panic attack. I was in the house on my own. I felt a little funny. I didn't know what it was. So I went and had a shower to try and wash away this weird feeling. 
Um, it wasn't a physical feeling, it was in my head. I felt this dark cloud come over me and I had no idea what was happening to me. I could feel it come in through my toes, in through my fingers and in through my head. I totally freaked out. I jumped out the shower, I ran downstairs. At this point I was hyperventilating. I was crying uncontrollably so I couldn't see anything. Um, I thought I was gonna throw up, I thought I was gonna pass out. So I went outside in my back garden and I laid on the floor and it was raining really hard. I thought I was going to die. I was probably out there for 10 minutes. I was shivering uncontrollably, I was shaking. Um, eventually my dad got in contact with me saying that my sister was on her way. I, I don't know what I'd have done or what would have happened if she hadn't come. The only way I can try and describe a panic attack is when someone gets really scared or that feeling they get when you miss a step. That initial fear, an anxiety attack and a panic attack is like that, but constantly it won't go away. The way I deal with my anxiety, I keep myself preoccupied with playing games all the time. I have a million consoles. Um, I try to go out with friends. It might seem really difficult if you're in that frame of mind where you just want to curl up in a ball on your own, but just push yourself because you will feel better for it. Hello, my name is Gavin. Uh, the next couple of moments I'm going to talk to you about um, a situation I personally experienced in the last 12 months initially to do with a physical illness that then turned into a sort of a mental emotional um, condition that I needed to uh, control. So say about 12 months ago I was diagnosed with lymphoma um, and I've had to go through a series of chemotherapy sessions um, with hospital stays and also lots of outpatient appointments uh, which culminated in June uh, with this stem cell transplant. Um, so I'm in remission, I'm on the road to recovery. It suddenly dawned on me what I'd gone through. Um, when you're so busy going to all these hospital appointments when you're physically ill, uh, you don't really have time to think about it, you just go with the flow. But it's in those quieter times when you reflect on the last 10 months or however long it was, that you realize the severity of the illness that you've had. Um, and you do struggle to come to terms with that sometimes. In my mind, sometimes I'm so scared, thinking, is this illness coming back? When people are feeling so down and rubbish, it's nice to try and make them feel better. There's a number of different ways to do this. Even a passing smell can change someone's perspective on their day. There's a website called Random Acts of Kindness. On here, it has lots of ideas on how to help someone. You just don't know what the person next to you is going through, and helping someone is the best you can do when that's all you can do. Out of 100 people, 2.6 suffer with depression. Four point seven out of one hundred people suffer with anxiety. Nine point seven people out of one hundred suffer with mixed anxiety and depression. Three out of one hundred people suffer with post traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. 1.6 out of 100 people suffer with eating disorders. Three to five in every 100 people have personality disorder. One to three people in every 100 have bipolar disorder. And one to three people in every 100 have schizophrenia.